Today marks the day where AMD have launched their 5500 XT, coming in two variants, both a 4GB and an 8GB at 169 and 199 USD MSRP, respectively. Here at the studio, we've got the MSI Gaming X, which I assume is going to cost a little bit more. I actually don't know how much this card will cost exactly, but with that aside, let's get into the gaming benchmarks for you guys, and then we'll come back and talk about everything related to this graphics card. So basically what we saw in those gaming benchmarks was depending on the title and also even the resolution, you got different numbers for different cards. For instance, if you wanted to play Fortnite, then from the tests I did here, the 5500 XT represents not just phenomenal value for money, but also solid frame rates at epic settings. This is both at 1080p and 1440p. Also with this gaming benchmark, I noticed that the DX12 wasn't working that well for the AMD cards just yet. However, on the Nvidia side with the new Turing cards, it did give a slight FPS boost. So I decided to go with those settings on the Nvidia side of things, except the 980 Ti, that wasn't really optimized for the new DX12 feature in Fortnite. Though moving on to Shadows of the Tomb Raider here, the sway went back to the Nvidia side, the super cards, especially the 1660 super, performing really well in this particular game, both at 1080p and 1440p. Though moving over to Red Dead Redemption 2, showed us that the Team Red cards, the 5500 XT in particular, was performing very well, especially for the money. And we will get onto that benchmark soon. Before Honor, both 1080p and 4040p extreme settings, we saw a solid performance from this 5500 XT. And then moving over to F1 2019 on DX12, we saw yet again another solid performance from this card. So next up, I'll pull up some power consumption numbers for you guys, where we can see the 5500 XT is doing pretty well, especially for the frames it's getting. It's doing a lot better than its predecessor, the RX 580, which was on 14 nanometer. And speaking of the exact specs with this card, I'll pull up a little graph for you guys, where we can see we've gone with seven nanometer on the 5500 XT, and it's also got a sizable amount of shaders, even compared to the 5700 XT, and it's also got 88 texture mapping units, as well as 32 ROPs on board, and a 128-bit memory bus versus the 256. And that's pretty much a halving of the bandwidth. However, with the eight gigabyte model, they're pretty much doubling up the density to give you guys that eight gigabytes. Though of course, what about overclocking the 5500 XT? Here's where I ran the F1 2019 numbers, and the supercards did overclock a little bit better in comparison to this 5500 XT, which again, as I said earlier before, it was the Gaming X model. So I'm not entirely sure how much it's boosting over a regular 5500, which I would love to get my hands on and see what the differences are. As this card really didn't overclock that much at all, and it started drawing a bit more power than I was comfortable with, especially for the gains. Though undervolting the card did show some favorable uh, wattage drops, as well as giving a still very solid FPS for what it was putting out. Though that being said, in relation to the Gaming X model itself, I'll pull up the next graph here where we can see the fan speeds relating to the noise. And this is the first time I've seen a card built in this particular manner, where out of the box it went up to 40% fan speeds, but it was extremely quiet. But then after that, the fans just really got loud. And so I'd recommend keeping this card, honestly, at its 40% sweet spot out of the box. And usually I find for most cards, it's 60%. But we can just see with the noise difference going from 40 to 60% that it just wasn't worth it in terms of the thermals versus the actual noise. 
But before we move to a conclusion now, we've got some new software features that have just came out the same time as this graphics card where AMD have pretty much overhauled their whole Radeon software. And me personally, I am digging what they're doing with this software. It looks really clean. It functions a little bit better than the previous software in my opinion. And so you've got all your options in this software to do what you could previously do, but you've also got the extra feature called Radeon Boost. Uh, which will essentially uh, dynamically scale your resolution to give you more frames per second in fast action paced games. However, one thing I will say about the 5500 XT is it's using the same encoder still as the 5700 XT, which is still very similar in performance to the RX 580. And I'll pull up a comparison between the 5500 XT and also the 1660 Supers encoders. And I feel like the Nvidia encoder is giving us out better quality at 1080p 6,000 kilobits per second, which is a very popular streaming option for people on Twitch and other platforms. So basically now it's time to sum everything up for you guys with the 5500 XT. Now, one thing I would have loved to have seen was the four gigabyte model come through here because I'll pull up the value for money chart and we see that the eight gigabyte model for a new card is doing really well. And that's what we want to see when it comes to these new graphics cards. We wanna see value for money punching hard, and we also wanna see power consumption dropped as well. And so that's what you're getting with this card, at least compared to an RX 588 gigabyte. There's currently a very popular card on Amazon for 170 US dollars. This card, if it comes in at that MSRP, and it offers similar performance to what I've shown here in the video today, then it's gonna be a great card for a lot of people. I can see this thing selling quite well. Though one thing I do know for certain is that the Gaming X model generally commands a premium over the MSRP. So I'm hoping that it doesn't perform that much better because of where I put the MSRP on the graph in relation to the value for money. But one thing is certain is that the four gigabyte model I feel is going to offer a lot of gamers great value for money for a card coming in at $169. So I will try and get my hands in the next coming weeks on the cheapest model I can get off retail shelves. And then we'll come back and compare that to the Gaming X model here that I reviewed today for you guys. And then we can come to a proper conclusion on value for money. But as it stands, this card is definitely looking pretty good from the numbers that I've shown here today. Though with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments about the 5500 XT that we reviewed here today, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section for us. Though let's quickly move on to the question of the day. This comes from Plasmancer and they ask, would this board work with a Ryzen 5 2600? And he's referring to the uh, X570 ITX from ASRock, that motherboard. And yes, it certainly will. Any X570, regardless of its BIOS date, should work with a Ryzen 5 2600 out of the box. And there it is, folks, the 5500 XT. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying the content, you're not subbed yet, maybe you should hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also a big thanks to Nick and Claire from Gear Seekers for cross-referencing some of the numbers with us for the 5500 XT, because when it comes to things like Fortnite and DX12 and stuff, you just gotta make sure that your numbers are okay and they check out and it's not all in your head or there's no driver issues and stuff like that. So once again, big thanks and peace out for now, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.